What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at what an API is, and then I'm gonna show you how to use it. So API stands for Application Program Interface, and it basically acts as an intermediary between two different applications that want to talk to each other. An API typically has a client and a server, and so the application or the person that is submitting the request that is the client. And then the client is the application that is sending the response to that request. So an API is kind of like a middleman. Let's say you have you over here, you're the user and you want data from this company and they have this API set up. And in this API, they're gonna show you exactly what you are allowed to take and how often you're allowed to take it. And they're not gonna show you everything that they have on the client side because there are things that they don't want you to have access to. So it really keeps both parties happy because the user can still access the data and use the data but this company doesn't take all the risk of opening up all their databases and everything, so it's a lot more secure. So to give you a metaphor for all of this, imagine you're going to a butcher shop and you know they have all those big display windows of all the different types of meats that they have available. And you call the butcher over and you say, hey, I want this, this, and this, and he goes back and he prepares it for you, and then he brings it to you and you are a happy customer and he is happy because you are buying his products and using his products. And that's basically what an API is. You're not the one going back behind the counter and, and getting things for yourself and messing everything up you know, that butcher is the one who's gonna go get it for you and make sure everything is done properly. I know that was a fantastic metaphor and you guys all really enjoyed that, but let's jump onto my screen. I'm gonna show you how to actually use an API. All right, so to show you how to use an API, we're gonna be taking a look at CoinMarketCap. And this basically is a website that tracks cryptocurrencies. So over here, we have all these different cryptocurrencies and we have their prices, their market caps, volume, circulating supply. Now, if you don't, or if you're not into crypto, you may not know what any of this is, but it's data, um, you know, here are the columns, here's the data, and we wanna use that data. So we want to take that data for, let's say just a personal project, or we wanna put it up on our own website uh, and display this. So we want this information. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom, stick with me. And under products, we have this crypto API. So let's go ahead and click on that. And it's gonna take you to their kind of their developer section. Now, all you have to do in order to get access to this API and the API key, which again allows you to use the API, is we're gonna click on get your API key now, and you're gonna to have to sign up. So you're gonna to have to create a, a free account and that's all you have to do. Uh, you can just say you're a hobbyist and you want this data and you don't want newsletters and you're gonna create an account. Now I already have an account, so I'm gonna log in really quick. So this is our dashboard and right over here we have our API key and you can copy this key or you can generate a new key whenever you want to use it for different stuff or, or you just need a new key. And we have our API key usage. Now, you cannot just call it all the time forever. You have limitations and this is pretty standard with most APIs. They don't want you just overloading their system, right? You're going to have credits. So we can only use this 333 times today, um, which is really generous. And so you know, we can use this and call this a lot of different times. As you can see, I've called this many times. I've, you know, tested this quite a bit. And this is fantastic. So we're gonna come back and use this key in a little bit. One thing that you should always look for when you're using an API is the API documentation, which is right over here. Now the documentation for an API can be extremely important because not all APIs are set up exactly the same. And so they're gonna show you how to access it, how to use the keys, um, and, and it's really important that you read through this because they may have certain limitations or stipulations on how to use it. So for us, we, we're gonna be using this and we're gonna go to this quick start guide. And I do recommend going through all of this. I did, um, but for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna take a really you know high level glance at this. So right here, we're gonna go over here to Python. This is under the, uh, the quick start guide right here. So they're gonna show you, you just need to sign up for the free account get your API key, make a test call using your key, and then you can switch it over to the, um, the pro coin market cap later once you actually wanna hit off the production environment, um, but they want you to kind of test it out first. So I clicked on this Python and they are extremely generous in that they uh, provide you with this code right here that you can just copy and paste and use right away. And it uses this sandbox API to make sure that your um, your actual key right here is working properly. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm gonna pull up a Jupyter Notebooks and we are gonna test this and I'm gonna show you how to actually use it. All right, so I have my API test notebook right here. I have my API setup, which I've already done all of this. 
Um, so I'm just going to show you how to do it. I've already done all of it, so I might copy and paste some stuff to you know save me some time. But what we're going to go back and do is we're going to go and copy all of this. Oops. Let's copy this right here and paste it into here. Now this API key right here, I don't know if it's going to work. Let's test it out really quick. Um, it does work, but that's not our API key. So I'm guessing that we can't just use this forever. This is just the one that they want you to use in this sandbox environment. But we want to use our actual API key so that we can make those, you know, 333 calls each day. And then what we're going to do is kind of go a little above and beyond that to kind of standardize the data because as you can see, this is not super usable in its current state. And then after that, we're going to have all the data ready to go and we're going to set it up for a future video, which I create an entire project around automating this and creating automated polls every hour or day. And then we can create the dashboards for it and it's going to be a fantastic project in my opinion. So let's go right back up here and we are going to go back so that we can grab our API key. So this is our unique API key. We're going to copy that and we're going to come right over here and we're going to paste it right where it says pro API key. Now this is my unique key, but feel free to use it. I created a dummy account so you can use this as much as you'd like. I'll provide all the code in the description. You can go and click on it, download uh, you know, the code and use exactly what I have. Now, if we go back to the documentation right here and we scroll down just a little bit, this is using the sandbox API, but if you come down just a little further, uh, it's gonna tell us how to actually use our API key. And, and it's gonna say that we should uh, target the domain of pro-API. So let's copy this and let's go right here and let's see if it works. And it failed. And I think I know the issue. I need to get rid of this right here. So now let's try it because I had two HTTPSs in there. Uh, so now let's try this and see if we can get the data using the correct HTTPS. So I was hoping that this was going to happen because this is exactly what happened to me the first time I tried to pull data from uh, this coin market cap. And I hadn't had this happen in a long time. And I wanted to show you how to fix it. So I'm honestly glad this happened. So what we need to do is actually increase the, the data rate limit. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to search and we're going to say Anaconda uh, prompt. And when we go in here, this is for me at least, um, we're going to paste this right here. And I'll have, again, this will be in the um, in the code that I offer you. It'll, it'll have this at the bottom. But you need to put in Jupyter Notebook. And we're going to increase the limit of the data that we can pull or, or increase our data rate limit. And we're going to hit enter. And it's going to do a bunch of stuff here. Give it one second. And I think it fixed it. Let's run it and see if it worked. All right, so this obviously didn't work like it did last time for me, um, which I did not see coming, if I'm being honest. <clears throat> so I am on Stack Overflow trying to figure this out. I'm going to kind of walk through this with you and see if we can figure this out together, because if this happens to you, it'd be really great if, you know, this would help you figure this out. All right, now I have this other one telling me to put this in. Let's see if this one works. Uh, nope, that didn't work either. All right, guys, so I got it to work. I It was honestly by dumb luck. Uh, if I'm being completely honest, what I would do is try using this right here. That's what I did and it worked. Um, but what I ended up doing is, is I just copied this local host. I said, copy or paste one of these into the URL. So I was like, Hey, let me try. So I copied it. I put it up here. I went over here to API test notebook, which is the one that we're using. Um, and then I ran it again and it worked. Um, Again, half of this stuff is just like tinkering with it and figuring it out. If you've ever watched one of my projects, I, I show that stuff because this stuff is going to happen. Uh, and so just a warning that if you are trying this and if you're actually using this and writing the code, you may encounter that. And those are the steps that I took to figure it out. As you can see, I have a ton of stuff up here um, from all my testing over the last like 30 minutes to try to get this to work, but now it works. So now that we have the actual data in here, really quickly, I'm just gonna show you how to normalize it and make it look a little better. So if you can see, this is actually in uh, kind of this JSON format. So use this JSON.loads. 
Um, and in order to get it kind of into a usable state, um, but you know, we're, I'm gonna show you how to do that, but just to show you, this is a type, and we're gonna, the, this is data right here. Um, type of data, it's in a dictionary format, data type. And so what we're gonna do is import pandas as pd, and then we're gonna do pd.set. Um, well, let me show you this in a little bit. Actually, I'll write it out. Now that we have this, uh, we're gonna import pandas. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something called a JSON normalize, uh, which is just going to make this look a lot prettier. And you'll see that in a little bit uh, because it's basically gonna put it into a data frame. So we're gonna say pd.json underscore normalize. And we're gonna say data. And I know I haven't really showed you this data super well or, or everything in it, but inside this, J, uh, this JSON, which is kind of like nested, there is uh, data in here. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, so we have the status. So we can pull in the status, which um, for the sake of it, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, and you can see some of the um, data that we can pull in. It's status, let's try that real quick. I think it was capitalized. Oh, it wasn't. Let's do that. And this is the data that's pulling in. This is a timestamp, this is the error message, the total count, some of the things that you see right up here, right? Uh, then right here we have our data. Now this is the actual data that we want. So let's pull that in. And as you can see, it is much, much better looking than it was just a second ago. It has all the uh, things that we want uh, as we can see, we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, oops, uh, and, and so we have all of these things. Over here we have, um, you know, this dot, dot, dot. That's what this right here is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this again, and now we'll run this again. And now we should be able to see every single column. That's what this does. It displays the max columns. So now we can see every column, and we can look at the last updated. This is today's date at today's time. Um, and here's the price. So we, we now can look at the price. Um, you may be seeing a lot of standard notation on this and you may wanna know how to get rid of that. I'll show you how to do that in the future video when I make the full project out of it. But that is how you use an API. Now we have all this data. We can put that into a CSV. We can keep it in the data frame. You can do whatever you want with it. You can then use this and put this into a, a, a website so that you can display this information on your website. There's a lot of things that you can now do with this data and that's how you are able to kind of connect to this and you are able to use these, this key to access their API. Now, again, I didn't have to do almost any of this or write any of this because they already had it all written for me in the documentation. So I highly suggest reading a lot more of that documentation. I read through so much of it just to make sure I got everything right. Uh, you wanna make sure you're, you're using their APIs correctly. And so I hope that this was helpful. I'll leave the code down below in the description so you can click on it, download it, try to run it yourself. If you run into the same issue that I did, I'm so sorry. I hope that you can figure it out faster than I did or use the methods that I showed you on how to actually um, you know, see it and, and see the data. So I hope that this has helped you learn a little bit more about APIs and how they work and how you can actually use them to get data out of them. If you're watching this in the future, I hope that I have that project completed so you can just click on the link in the description or at the end of the video, I should have that available. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.